Hi guys, it's Luton here, and um, for the last couple of days I've been working on trying to get a new sort of setup going on. Um, for up until recently I've been using iMovie, but now um, I'm actually working moving towards Final Cut because it allows me to do a lot more in terms of editing and processing, and it also can give better quality on export. Now, over here we've got ITV, and ITV is what I use for recording all the footage, etc, etc. Now, one of the biggest problems, and I'm sure other people will have this issue as well, uh, when you're exporting from ITV, you have to export in the native, well, you generally export in the native H.264 format. That's no good for Final Cut because it doesn't really, it doesn't like that, that um, encoding because H.264 is not really designed for working with um, as a video format. So it means you have to re-encode it. But the problem is, is that what do you choose to re-encode it as? Now, there's lots of different choices. Now, one of the most important things is going to be size. And you have to compromise a little bit of it. The way to think about it, I think about it, is this. Generally, like for example, when I'm working with iMovie, you export in H.264, which gives you a small file. But you have to wait a long time for iMovie to render these files. So your kind of time gets made up in different ways. Whereas with Final Cut, okay, you have a larger file size with the initial um, file that you put into it. So, you know, we're going to use a different file format. The file size is going to be much larger. But when you put it into Final Cut itself, um, the actual working time that you have, it will go in almost instantly. You can work with it immediately. It's a lot faster to work with. There's not any lag when you're working with stuff. There's a hell of a lot more you can do with it in the first place. Um, and when you come to export, your export size is going to be faster and smaller. So sure, okay, you end up with a larger file size initially, but then after that, it works through. Now, that in itself is one thing, but it's actually been a major, major headache for me just trying to find the correct information. And that's why I usually end up making these videos, because I'm so pissed off that I haven't been able to find actually any good information. It's so hard to find good technical information on the net, stuff that's actually reliable, not just someone talking, you know, they they think it works. So they make a video about it and then everyone goes, oh, that's how you do it. And it actually doesn't work or it's not very good. So you can see here that I've been going through a lot of different formats, interlaced tests, H.264, RAW, AIC, uh, QuickTime H.264, HDV 720, in the usual way that I go through things methodically, trying out lots of different processes. You can also see in Final Cut that I've got interlace 1, interlace 2, intro test, Far Cry, blah, 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 and I've done various bits and pieces. So what we're going to do, I'm pretty sure that I've got it down now and worked out the best way to do it. The main problem is the encoding time. Now, I've often people use very, very small clips as an example, okay, because, but I, I hate people using small clips in videos because it doesn't give a realistic representation of how long it takes. So take my word for it, okay, I have tried this with slightly longer clips and I, this, I think, is the best way to do it. So, as an example, the native H.264, we'll just label this Battlefield 3 H.264. All right, and that's going to export this little clip that I've made right here, and it's just going to export it in the raw clip. So look, see how fast this goes? It's almost instantaneous, and the file size of that file is 29 meg. Now, in order to get it into a format, but we can't use that in Final Cut, remember. Now, to get that into a format that we can use in Final Cut, we have to use a different format, okay? And we're probably going to have to use either HDV 720 or QuickTime Movie. Now, HDV 720 is fine. It makes a large file size. You can see it's it's gone up. The estimated size is 671, okay? But let's just type in Battlefield 3 HDV 720. Let's see how long this takes to export. Now, similarly, this is not actually a bad way to do it, but you can see that uh, the file size is considerably larger than it suggested. It said it was going to be about 67. It's actually 200 megabytes, but that's pretty much what you should expect it's going to be. Like I say, the file sizes are considerably bigger, but it's a compromise. You're compromising on file size. It's larger, but you can do a lot more with it and the time and everything. Okay, but we do have other options. Now, QuickTime 
is another option, right? And if you go to this, you'll see that there's other settings. I'm just going to do this really quickly. You can find out from other videos. You go into settings, you go to H.264, you can leave it current, you can leave it this. The only thing I would do is put that to best and you click OK and this is all fine. Now again, it says estimated size 38 meg, etc, etc. Let's click save again. We'll see how long it takes. Now this actually can take a little longer and we'll see this. It gives me a little bit of talking time. The quick time mode, it takes a little bit longer. Now, the thing is when you have larger file sizes, there's different ways of thinking about how what you're going to do with it. And at the moment as well, these export times, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with it. Now, iMovie as a program itself shouldn't be knocked. It's a very simple, very easy to use program and it's what I've used for a year now. It's it's a very simple, straightforward program. It does exactly what you need to. A lot of these very complicated programs like Premiere and um, well, Final Cut itself and so on and so on and, and Vegas, they're all very well and good but they often do a hell of a lot more than people realistically need. Um, it's like, for example, why I always laugh when people are going, they've got, you know, Photoshop CS8 or whatever and it's like, well, what are you going to do with it? Color correct pictures you know you don't need like 90% of what is in that program so iMovie works very well just as a very simple program itself but look at this export time compared to the time we waited for the HDV 720 it's almost stopped now um, and this is a very very small clip um, I'm going to let this one run on provided it doesn't go on for another 10 minutes because it often once it gets to about halfway it will speed up extremely um, but it gives you an idea of the difference between encoding to different formats. However, there is quite an interesting thing to note. Um, remember that we changed the um, QuickTime mode to the H.264. Again, that's just for sort of quality. Now I've tried to make this slightly more comprehensive video to show you the actual sort of footage at the same time. I've got sound turned off just so it's a bit easier going in that. But uh, we're still waiting, we're still waiting on this one. I'm going to cancel this one because it's just taking far too long. Now you can see, now imagine if, you know, how long is this clip? You know, this clip is very short. If we click on this, it'll just tell me. Right, so it's a 17 second clip, all right? Imagine how much longer it would be if it was like a 20 minute video, all right? If you've got 17 seconds, you need that encoding to be almost instantaneous because otherwise you're never gonna be able to get anywhere with your, you know, your recordings. You have to leave it overnight every single time you wanna encode anything, it's gonna be a nightmare. So we'll look at other options. Now we're still in QuickTime. But if we go back to options, and settings. We've got a lot of other choices. Now what I'm going to put it to is Apple Intermediate Codec or AIC. Don't need to adjust anything else. All right, the only thing I would do is change the size here just to 1280 720 HD. Okay, and I'll just label this Battlefield 3 AIC. Now let's see how fast. I've already got a file in here, but let's replace that. Ah, the file is busy. It probably means I've got it open or it's working on something else. All right, we'll label it to. It doesn't want to be done. Battlefield 3 AIC 2. That'll do. Unfortunately, our quick time mode has reset itself. Sorry about this. Okay, now again, look at the speed difference. Uh, moving how long the HDV 720 was and again this is very very quick now bear in mind that this is a 17 second clip so you know let, let's just average it say it's half a minute so imagine you have to wait double this time for one minute and then think about 20 times that for a sort of 20 minute clip so it's not an unworkable period of time you're probably roughly looking at it taking near to the same amount of time to encode as it is the actual clip itself that's not a really bad thing to be honest it's it's you know as encoding times goes, if you work with video, you'll know that's not actually that bad. And again, the size is comparable to the HDV 720. So really, to get it to a format that we can, you know, realistically use, it's going to take about that kind of file size. And again, let's just, just for curiosity's sake, we'll just go with the default QuickTime mode. All right, that's not changed anything. So I'll just call that Battlefield 3 QuickTime. But bear in mind as well that if you just wanted to put raw footage up, you could still literally just export. And again, look, the actual QuickTime setting itself is a bit quicker. It's not perhaps as fast.
but it's not bad. I'll tell you, I was getting really frustrated as well this evening because um, I was trying to export. I was I was doing all my experiments with Far Cry, and um, I actually forgot that in Far Cry, I'll show you. Um, in Far Cry, okay, here we go. Now that battlefield clip that we saw there was perfect. Now look, this is the raw video, and what I want to show you. If you look right here, hang on a sec, I want to find an example. Right here, you can't see it as well. See right here on his hand, there's like these little lines, and it's interlacing. You can see right here. Now all through Far Cry, you get a lot of this. You can't see it so well just on the raw footage, but once you start processing and encoding, you can see little lines and stuff. And if you, once it's been imported and exported, Far Cry, it's got these really, you can see as well, you see the tearing here? See how that, that screenshot has got tearing in it? And Far Cry, when you play the game, it gets this tearing sometimes. That's not people's videos, that's just the game. That's how it is. And it also has these interlacing lines mixed into it. You'll notice in my Battlefield footage, it does not have that. And it's to do with the game itself. Like you can see, this picture here is very nice and clear. And I did, I did go through a lot of clips like this. Look at every frame, look at the detail very, very close and uh, there are no interlacing lines and I compared it with a couple of other things probably got some other gameplay on here I could check and compare as well what else can we look at? Battlefield, Battlefield, okay here's Pixel Junk again Pixel Junk is super clear see look, no lines, no nothing, it's perfect now if you get this look, see this now Obviously, this is a single frame, so these are sort of animation lines as such. That's not the same thing at all. Because when you click to play, you see it's perfect. Anyway, that's a whole other issue. So now we've got our two formats, okay? And uh, we need to bring those into Final Cut. Now, the good thing about Final Cut bringing those videos in is that it's extremely quick. Now, if you're bringing files into iMovie, now arguably these are small files, but even if they're larger files, you can work with them almost straight away. So don't be deceived. Don't think that just because these are small files. I'm going to bring in both these files here. So at the top here, we've got our AIC file and our HDV720 file, both 200 megs. Just leave all this default. Okay, and those two files go in there straight away. Now I can just uh, make a new project very quickly, just as an example. Okay, now you can see we've got our two videos right here. And um, just as a kind of quality comparison to see if there's any real difference between the two of them. And I'm pretty sure you'll find that there won't be. I can't actually move that away from that file. I probably can, but... Anyway, okay, so now we've got these videos in here, we can actually see the quality. Now when I freeze frame, you'll see the real quality. When it's playing, it can often go a little bit blurry, especially on the text. Notice on the text here how it's very blurry, but when I pause, see how it becomes instantaneously really sharp? It's just because it's kind of working with the video in a much faster format. So I think it kind of renders it slightly or whatever. It's, it's just working with that video format. So when you play, it's in a kind of looser sort of format. But you'll see, hopefully, when we finish the, uh, the export and we get this out of here, that it's a bit different. And again, pause it. It becomes very sharp and clear. Now that's the HDV720 file. When we go into the AIC file, you should not really be able to see very much difference whatsoever. Uh, they're both pretty clear pretty good and again you may notice as I say on, on all videos you get like a little bit of this interlacing stuff um, but it's never very very extreme you can de-interlace files and blah 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 but uh, most of the time for YouTube anyway it's not necessary because of how much it degrades it so that's our videos now I'm just going to remove that section so we only have a small piece left I'm just going to go back and uh, I'm just going to export this um, I'm just going to export it in the real default version Video, H.264, blah, 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 44 meg. So you see how the file size has gone down hugely, all right? We're at like kind of a quarter of the original uh, file size there, so it's really scaled down. Aftermath test, I'm just going to put this in my Far Cry folder. 
Okay, now the export time, again, it will vary depending on the length of the video and, and so on. But at the moment, you can see it's pretty quick because this is a very short video. It's like a 17 second video. So depending on what the video is and, and so on, it's, I don't know, potentially it's going to be sort of double the amount of time that it would take. But um, it's generally pretty quick. And for exporting anyway, you can leave it just you know you can carry on doing other things final cut's quite good you can click this here and it shows you what's happening you tell you percentage you can stop it if you want to and so on and so on but uh, we'll just let that export so this whole process has been quite um it's not been very easy i have to say in fact um just trying to find any kind of documentation about what settings to use and even how to do it when you're bringing video in is really really difficult um, especially when you have lots of different capture devices people using different things wanting different settings and trying to find out the best way they can do there you, are, you see that went to 50 percent and then exported so don't be confused when you see these uh, exporting things and it goes to sort of halfway i often find with exporting and uploading and things like this it will get to about halfway and then it will it'll just do it it'll do it so uh as i say it, it, it took about 30 seconds for a 17 second video so imagine if you had a 17 minute video it might take half an hour so it's actually not too bad so this is the final video you can see here now you can see that let's compare that to the quality of the actual raw hdv 720 video itself okay now here's the raw video and here's the final video and i think you would agree although this will have been uploaded to YouTube when you're actually watching. So it'll be pretty hard to tell the difference. Let me just scale these down a little. And then uh, bear in mind I haven't color corrected or cropped or anything. This is just literally the sort of raw footage. Right, I'll try and play these side by side here. I've got to click play as quick as I can. So they're not going to be perfectly synced. But it should just give you an idea of the quality. Now that's the raw footage, remember, and the final footage after export. And I think you would agree that pretty much there is no real difference. I think you would really struggle to tell any kind of difference between those two videos. It's lagging a little bit here, but that's because I think there's other programs doing stuff right now. Let me just pause one of these. Oh no, it's because it got to the end of the video. <laughs> I was thinking this is slowed down a lot. No, it's because it got to the end of the video. But yeah, as I say, you can see the quality here is good. This is the final video export. And to be honest, I say it's, it's as good quality as the raw footage was after export so this is why i say you know when your quality is as good as the raw stuff that you've exported and encoded once you put it into youtube it's literally down to youtube however i will say that the export settings and so on and so on that i've used with uh, the final cut it does make a big difference and um, i actually compared a little screenshot earlier and a lot of that kind of bad dark area handling that i was having with the other videos um it, it seems to disappear but it just means that because of these larger file sizes, you need to stay on top of your editing and stuff. So usually I will leave footage like into my events for a while. So that if I want to go back and pick it up or whatever, I'm going to have to be quite ruthless about it. And when you have finished with your stuff, you're just going to literally have to move it to the trash and delete it. And you're probably going to have to delete those projects as well, get rid of them. So for example, you can go here, move project to your trash, get rid of it, get those things out of the way. So that's been this little video. It's been a little bit longer than I thought, but I think it's been quite sort of comprehensive and I think it'd be helpful. I was going to post this as its own video, but I think I'll post it as a new cutting room video. And uh, tell you what, to finish up, let's just screenshot here. We'll screenshot Final Cut and that can be my background. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.